let you take it away. Okay. Hey, Thomas, how are you? Hey, I'm phenomenal. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty well. I'm sorry you went out first, but overall, how was your big brother experience? It was insanely beautiful. Uh, I wouldn't change a thing about anything that uh, any way I played. Uh, I went in there and made some phenomenal relationships that I know uh, will extend long beyond the walls of the Big Brother house. So I can't complain. I'm really, really grateful and uh, super stoked for the entire experience. Well, that's good to hear. Um, I was going to ask if you would have changed anything about this week, if you would have fought a little harder to stay once you were evicted. Like, how did that kind of go for you? Yeah, here's the thing. Um, I I initially went in there and uh, thought I would, you know, be a lot more sa of a savage with it. I'd be able to lie, cheat, steal, and kill uh, my way to the top. And when I, when I got in there and I way probably too early, but uh, very early on started forming some rock solid relationships. Um, I mean, that's just that's just the nature of my personality, who I am. I, I kind of, you know, fall in love a little too easily and a little too deeply, and I. I ended up forming personal relationships that I, I ended up banking on um, taking priority over any sort of uh, actual uh, strategy that would be this early. I just thought, you know, if you get to know the person, uh, they'll ride with you. And that wasn't the case, but I mean, that's who I am. I really don't think I could have been, you know, kind of more deceptive or more of a, a lie or a cheat. I just don't think it's in my blood. Yeah. Um, was Frenchie's HOH as insane in person as it seemed on the live feeds? Because it seemed pretty crazy. <laughs> I think it was probably 10 times more insane in person. Yeah, it was absolutely <laughs> bonkers. He was, I mean, it was a smorgasbord of, of facetious promises, you know, to everyone, uh, to, to random twists, uh, changing up the target for him. Uh, probably every couple hours, he had just about everyone's name in his mouth. But if they came to him directly, he would promise them, you know, the whole world. And so I think uh, he ended up playing uh, way too much with his heart and not enough with his head, making a, uh, uh, empty promises that will come back to bite him in the ass later on. And uh, I think everyone saw that it was a royal shit show and that the first head of household ship shouldn't be that that much of a challenge. And that's going to reflect on, you know, uh, what they think of him. Yeah, for sure. Um, so you said last night that you think the the white guys with abs get get conked um, pretty early on. Why do you think that they uh, they get targeted so early? The surfer's curse, man. It lives on, right? I'm sure there's a bunch of memes with my face plastered on it now uh, about that. But I think it's because, uh, well, there's two facets to it and they're, and they're kind of conflicting actually, but people probably take one or the other uh, avenues every time. One is that they don't provide enough value. Maybe, you know, they're just kind of going with the flow and whatever happens, happens. And people can see that easily and say, oh, they're not going to be willing to make big moves with me. Why would I bring them into an alliance? And then the other side of that is that, you know, surfer guys uh, are typically really charismatic. You know, you're, you're, you're funny. You have uh, typically a decent, you know, build that kind of paints you as a target for a competitive threat to do well in competitions. And that scares people as well, you know, just uh, kind of, kind of from a fearful standpoint of, of them being overly competitive players. Yeah. So who do you think is in the best position in the house right now? Without a doubt. I mean, I don't have a ton of insight being that I was only in there for a week, but I'd have to go with uh, my guy, Kai. He has positioned himself really well uh, and uniquely in that I think he's the only one in the house. If the preschool antics fly and the girls go to the girls' side and the guys go to the guys' side, he would be the only one that would uh, be kind of an outlet and transfer of information between those two. And I think that just comes down to a fantastic social game he's played and uh, the development of, of actually intimate relationships he has with what seems like literally everyone in the house. And uh, he doesn't seem like too terrible of competitive th threat. He actually lost, you know, a couple of competitions, though now he has one head of household. So we'll see about that side of things. But overall, um, I think he, he is well positioned uh, to kind of be uh, that glue between whatever alliances form. Yeah. Uh, anybody else stand out to you as being a pretty strong player early on? Um, I mean, although it's been, you know, a totally, uh, I mean, it's been a gnarly storm of a head of household ship. I've got to give it to Frenchie. Um, everyone just kind of sees him, I think, as, especially the younger players as this intimidating, uh, you know, guy, I mean, he's covered in tattoos, you know, he has the deep voice, the beard, uh, he's, a, he's, you know, a farm worker, uh, something about him is just kind of this authoritative figure that people kind of lean in and listen to what he says. 
And I think he's well positioned himself in that he might even have, you know, control and sway in, in, uh, in Kylan's head of household reign uh, to, to, to put up who he wants uh, yet again. So we'll see yeah. how that plays yeah. out. Who do you think is in the worst position in the house? Um, I don't think Derek X is going to be going out this week necessarily because of this, but I would say just, I mean, the guy keeps his mouth so completely wide open that flies are going to get in. Uh, it seems like every single secret I or anyone else have, have kind of told him or any sort of transfer of information that wasn't even a secret, uh, but he, you know, he kind of spills it and, and uh, flaunts it and talks about it with, with anyone who has a pair of ears. And I think that's going to catch up to him. I mean, he clearly doesn't seem, you know, that's not a guy you want to tell any of your secrets to. Uh, he's like way too transparent about things like that. Uh, even to, you know, like me, I would say I was probably his best friend in the house and he still just like, you know, had to tell people, you know, any beef and any tea that was in the house. Yeah. So I think that's, it's going to do him poorly. I think he needs to get in an alliance. I think he does. And the worst part is um, we had a really quick conversation that I know didn't make uh, that episode about uh, any sort of alliance, if he had any idea. And he told, and, and he's really transparent with me again, you know, we have that really strong personal bond. So I don't think he would have lied about this, but he said, uh, I have no idea. I don't think there's an alliance. And then I came, I came to find out like, poor guy, you know, the slaughterhouse exists. So I think he is uh, kind of left on the outskirts as well. Yeah. Um, tell me a little bit about what you did that didn't make the show that Julie was talking about, kind of blowing up people's games before you left. What was that? Yeah, so I kind of had, you know, two avenues of uh, potential movement in, in regards to, you know, exploding Frenchie's game. I could have just totally sent him into the stratosphere right in front of everyone in my, you know, kind of pre-eviction uh, speech there. Or uh, I could tell people individually, you know, uh, and, and kind of inject some longevity into their game and allow them to diffuse that information when, when they you know, felt productive to them rather than just forcing it on, on all of them. And I ended up going with the latter. Uh, and my reason behind that is one, I'm not really a vengeful guy. I never you know, wanna, wanna walk away with my head down or with you know, frowns on my face or other people's faces. And I do you know, respect Frenchie as a person separate from the game. And so I decided you know, I wanted to go out on my own like fun, shirtless, uh, you know, whimsical joke. <laughs> and instead, uh, I would give the power to people that I cared about. So I told uh, my team, Kylan, Tiffany, and Claire. And then I told my friends, uh, Derek and Brent, uh, just to be cautious, uh, because Frenchie is a complete and total liar. Uh, you know, he, he promised me things that he did not uh, uphold and uh, that they could use that, you know, whenever they want, rather, whenever, rather than whenever I want uh, to, to benefit their own game in the future. Yeah, that's great. I'm personally rooting for the Queens. I really liked all four of you guys. So I hope that they do well. Thank you. Yeah, they really rock. And it's, <laughs> it's the cherry on top, though, that they, you know, they won the HOH right as I'm headed out. Um, yeah. I didn't see that coming. Um, who is your one pick for someone that could go all the way, someone that could win the whole thing? Um, I've got to go, uh, between Kylan and Xavier again, Kylan's in that unique uh, position where, you know, he, he, I think he has ears with everybody. He, he seems like a really intelligent guy that people want kind of counselship from, uh, whether they're in position, uh, of power or not. And I think he'll utilize that well. And then I think, uh, Xavier, although I don't really respect or, or care about the lame ass way he's playing, I think it's totally working and that he's, he's, totally positioned himself to be a fly on the wall. I mean, it, uh, any attempts at conversation with him uh, in terms of strategy would result in him being like this super nonchalant chill guy that didn't want to have a conversation about strategy, you know? Oh, I'm just here for the summer. I'm going to lay out by the pool. I'm going to play billiards. <laughs> I was like, you know, give me an absolute freaking break, buddy. You're clearly playing the, the glide under the radar tactic. Um, I saw through it, but, you know, I'm out. So I can't, you know, I can't persuade others uh, to see that as well. And uh, ultimately, I think it's working for him to the point where he now just, you know, kind of lays around in the HOH room listening to and intaking good information and never, ever outputting any. And so, I mean, it's working for him. Uh, I think he'll be a hell of, a, of an athlete and a competitive threat as well. So uh, I think he'll go far if someone doesn't sniff him out. Yeah. Uh, who are you rooting for? Who would you love to see win? I would love to see Brent uh, win. He's got a hell of a personality. Uh, we got really close. I would love to see Derek X win for the same reason, although I would I would give him a fat chance at this point uh, of doing so, just because poor poor buddy can't keep his mouth closed. 
uh, and and for Kylan, just because he was a teammate, he was an early confidant, and uh, if I was still in there, I would I would be trying to uh, formulate an alliance with any of those three. So, all right. Um, now I don't have any info about anything, but sometimes house guests get a chance to go back in the house. So if you got to re-enter the house, who would be your top targets that like need to go? Um, I mean, I think he he'll probably be out this week is my guess, but I've got to go with Christian. You know, he's the more handsome version of me. Uh, he's a hell of an <laughs> athlete. Um, it seems like we're similar typecast and there's, there's not enough room in that house for two uh, goofy surfer guys. And uh, I think he would, he'd be easy pickings because he was also targeted by Frenchie uh, early on. So it'd be less blood on my hands to go after him. Yeah. You've mentioned a lot of male players. How do you think the women are doing so far this summer? Yeah. See, the reason I, I don't even have a lot uh, of information to work with about the female players is I think uh, there is, you know, some sort of, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it an alliance, but uh, I think they are tactically discussing strategy with each other uh, as a group a lot more than the guys are with the guys. And uh, with that, you know, I, I've obviously been, you know, kind of left out of that train. So I don't know a lot about what they're thinking, um, but I think all of them have very individual uh, strategic strategies and tactics they're, they're employing. Um, I think, you know, Claire has kind of employed the slide under the radar uh, tactic, uh, which I think is working very well for her, kind of just laughing and jumping into all conversation, uh, not really diving into strategy too much with anybody. I think Alyssa, on the other hand, is kind of the, the charming, you know, beautiful girl and uh, kind of uh, potentially has the play of potential showmans always looming next to her with, with Xavier or Christian. And, and so there's, you know, there's a lot of different plays there. I think Hannah, Hannah is really quiet, but is insanely smart and a great intellect and she'll be kind of a powerhouse for any sort of intellectual or, or memory comps and people see that. So, I mean, yeah, there's really just a plethora of, you know, tactic going on there. And I'm really excited to see how that plays out. Yeah, me too. Well, um, that was about all I had. So thank you so much for taking the time today. Likewise. Thanks for your time. All right. Take thank care. You. Have Thanks. a good one. Bye. Bye.